It's good to be with you today. I have to tell you, I really didn't want to film this particular day. I've sort of been dreading it. The reason is because I have to talk about a really messy part of me, and I just as soon skip past it to something I feel like I've got a better handle on. My secret sin, or not so secret, I suppose, if you hang around me for very long, is that I'm a perfectionist. I have been known to say this aloud. Why is perfection so difficult? Most people laugh at me for being naive and stupid enough to verbalize that crazy thought. But as a card-carrying member of the Perfectionist Club of America since childhood, I start every day expecting to find perfection. My hair doesn't curl the same way two days in a row. One day it looks better parted to the left, one day it looks better parted to the right. I wash a shirt exactly the way the manufacturer suggests and it still shrinks. I walk through my house, turning off lights that others have left on and mutter to myself, why? Can't they get it right? I go to church on the weekend, pick up a bulletin, find a typo. I look at the screen for the lyrics to the songs we're singing, a typo. I listen to Rick preach and I hear him say something that mortifies me. I look at the way I'm taking notes and I observe that my handwriting is sloping, the letters not sitting precisely on the lines provided. And before I know it, worship has become just one more place of frustration and annoyance instead of a place of connection with God and his people. Yeah, I know, it's pretty sad, pretty messed up, pretty joyless. And I can't think of a better way to kill the joy in myself than to expect perfection. See, perfection isn't difficult. It's impossible. It's impossible because of what happened with Adam and Eve in Genesis 2. When they blew it for the rest of us by eating that forbidden fruit, God said the punishment would be the world would live under a curse, making perfection not just difficult, but completely unattainable. Richard Carlson writes, I've yet to meet an absolute perfectionist whose life was filled with inner peace. The need for perfection and the desire for inner tranquility conflict with each other. But before you feel guilty for wanting perfection, let me give you some good news. It's not wrong to long for perfection. You and I were made for perfection. We were made for perfect relationships. We were made for perfect bodies. We were made to live forever. So the longing inside of us for perfection isn't wrong. What's wrong is to expect it here and now. This is where it all starts to go wrong, expecting to find it here on this broken planet filled with broken people, broken bodies, broken minds, broken circumstances. The antidote, it's acceptance acceptance of this imperfect world, acceptance of imperfect me, acceptance of imperfect you, acceptance that we live under a curse as we wait for the perfection that is promised to be restored to us in heaven. When God describes the new heaven and the new earth in Revelation 21, he details all the beauty and the loveliness, the perfection that will be there. It says in verse 3, there will no longer be any curse. That means hair that curls properly every time, bulletins with no typos, conversations that never go sour because of misunderstanding, bodies that don't get sick, minds that function as designed, no more accidents, betrayals, disappointments, no hurt, no pain. The curse will be gone. So hold on, all you died in the wool perfectionists. Perfection is coming. But until then, let go of the rigid, demanding expectations of yourself and others that rob you of joy. I'll see you tomorrow.